respect and um, deeply appreciate Brian and Bonnie Houston and this whole Hillsong team, this whole family, really. this whole ministry is remarkable and um, I always count it a tremendous honor when I'm asked to come and speak in a gathering like this. I get nervous sometimes. I still get nervous. Anybody get nervous when you are asked, would you like to come take this mic and see if you get nervous? And I was thinking about it the other day, and I said, you know, because I speak a lot, I spoke in different places all over the world this year, and uh, I, was, I was stressed out one day because I didn't feel like I had the message, and I was going to speak at this conference in South Africa. And, uh, and uh, you're not from South Africa. But um, it seemed like the Lord said to me in my heart, He said, number one, did you invite yourself? He said, no, I didn't. He said, then how do you think you got that? The next thing He said to me in my heart, I didn't hear an audible voice, but in my heart, He said, number one, did you invite yourself? And then, then He said to me, do you think I would gather thousands and thousands of people from all over the world for this conference you're going to go speak at so you can get up and make a fool out of you and me. And it really built my self-esteem. And I figured out it's not about me and it's not about you. It's all about Him. So one more time, I want you to give the lamb that was slain all the way up in the top of the If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me for a few moments tonight to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17. 1 Samuel, chapter 17. And I'm not going to preach long. I'm going to give you some, uh, some thoughts, some, some impressions, some common sense teaching right out of the Word of God that I pray comes alive to you. Because I feel like there's some giant killers in this room tonight. And I want to speak to you on the profile of a giant killer. If you've got a phone or you've got a piece of paper or something, I want you to take some notes and write down some thoughts that I want to share with you because I believe this is going to speak to many of you who have a call of God upon your life. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, now the Philistines gathered together, verse 1, their armies together to battle and were gathered in Sokka, which belongs to Judah. Everybody say it belongs to Judah. If, if you read on down in verse 2, it said that they were encamped in the valley that drew up against the Philistines. Verse 3, the Philistines stood on one side of the mountain. The Israelites stood on the other side of the mountain. And there was a valley between them. And who did the valley belong to? The valley belonged to Judah. And Judah means praise. Verse 4, and the champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from, from Gath, who, whose height was six cubits and a span. And I'll stop reading there for now, and I'm going to highlight several verses of Scripture as I go along here tonight. But I'm talking to you about the profile of a giant killer. This is that famous story of David and Goliath. And in this story... If you read it and see it like I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to see it tonight, you will see certain characteristics of giant killers, certain characteristics that a person who is going to slay the giants but stand before them and defy the call of God on your life. You're going to have to have and develop these characteristics, the profile of a giant killer. Number one, I want you to notice something about this, and I didn't have time to read it, but in 1 Samuel chapter uh, chapter 16, it's the story of David being anointed by Samuel. The Bible said that he was had oil poured on him and he was anointed to be king of Israel. But what is astounding that is if you look in 1 Samuel chapter 17, it says this in verse 17. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers 
dry grain, 10 loaves, and carry, verse 18, 10 cheeses to the captains where your brothers are. In other words, I want you to take some bread and I want you to take some cheese. You're going to be a glorified pizza delivery boy. Now, what is astounding about this, talking about the profile, the characteristics of a killer, the first thing I want you to see is he had just been anointed king of Israel. He had just been prophesied, you're going to do great things. You're going to be a prophet. You're going to be a king. You're going to be a mighty man of God. There will never be anyone like you on the throne of Israel again. God has really got a magnificent plan for your life. And then the very next chapter, his daddy says to him, I want you to get bread and cheese and go down and deliver the pizza to the boys on the battlefield. First point is this. I've never seen an unsubmitted giant killer. If you're going to be a giant killer, notice that he was submitted to his father and he did the menial task even though he had been prophesied, even though he was gifted, even though there was a huge call on his life, he was not so big in his own eyes that he couldn't do the little thing. Because if you're too big to do the little things, you're too little to ever do big things. And the first characteristic of a person that is a giant killer is they are submitted to authority. You've got to get under what God has put over you so you can get over what God wants to put under you. But if you cannot submit to authority, if you cannot submit to those whom God has put in your life, the authority of God's Word, the authority of spiritual leadership in your life, you may have incredible talent and amazing anointing, and it will take you so far, but you will never be able to slay the giants God wanted you to slay until you are submitted to authority. Number two, it says this, and I, you just go along with me in the Bible, and, and, and it says this, it says in verse 20, and David rose up early in the morning and went down to the battle. He rose up early in the morning. Uh, number two, I, I believe the second characteristic of a giant killer, is this speaks of discipline. A giant killer is not only submitted, but a giant killer is disciplined. He rose up early in the morning. Giant killers get up and they're disciplined. You, I've never seen a lazy giant killer. And I need to preach to this generation just a little bit. Because you've got to get up. And I don't mean, you know, you can't sleep late. You're, if you're a musician, you, you're on different clocks. We all get that. But what I'm talking about is some people have a concept of ministry as being this thing and you just kind of get up and, and you get a cappuccino and you kind of walk around and, and you kind of write a song and then you kind of float around. And ministry is a four-letter word. It's called work. And you have to get up early. You have to get up and pray. If you don't have enough discipline to get up and pray and get up and read the Word of God and get up and put God first in your life, you're never going to be a giant killer. He rose up early. I know you came to get a deep revelation, but turn to somebody and say, you're sleeping too much. If you're going to be a giant killer, you can't be lazy. There are two kinds of people God will not bless. Lazy people and stingy people. Give me a big amen and I'll move on. The sermon isn't going over too good so far, but I'm going to keep plugging away. The Bible said this, notice this, there's another clue. Characteristics, profile of a giant killer. Notice this, it said that he went down in verse 20. And when they were in the trenches, if you, if you have a King James Bible, it talks about they were in the trenches in the latter part of verse 20. And they were going out to fight, listen to this, shouting for the battle. Now what is a trench? A trench is a low place. Some believe that it was about a, a ditch, basically, that was six feet deep dug out. And here the army of Israel is down here in a trench, in a ditch, and here comes Goliath, this giant, who is approximately nine feet tall. But here's the problem. When you're down already 
even though he's nine feet tall, he looks like he's 16 feet tall because you're down. And it's a simple little thought, but giant killers can't stay down. They came out of the trenches, the Bible said. You can have a pity party if you want to, but nobody's going to come but the devil. And if you keep feeling sorry for yourself and talking about how bad your, your life is, nobody's going to really care except the devil. And he'll just tell you how bad it is and agree with you. At some point, you got to come up if you're going to be a giant killer. you got to get up in your faith. you got to get up in your, in your praise. you got to get up in your expectation and in your faith. You see, you find out that your problems aren't as big as you thought they were when you get up. It's so easy to stay down and, and, and you'll never be able to defeat giants when you're down and defeated and gloomy. you got to get up. Get up and believe that God can use you. Notice something else. The enemy usually comes with his greatest attack when you're down. The Bible said when they came out of the trenches, did you catch it? They shouted. Here's another, here's another clue to what giant killers do. Giant killers are shouters. Wait a minute. Not after the battle is won, but they shouted from a low place coming up to go fight the light. Giant killers do not allow the enemy to do trash talking in the valley. The valley belongs to Judah. The valley doesn't belong to fear and worry and intimidation. The valley belongs to praise. The valley belongs to people who say, I know you're big, but my God is bigger. My God is greater. My God is stronger. Are there any giant killers in New York tonight? If we're going to have victory in this nation, we can't be silent. If we're going to have victory in our cities and in our families, we cannot be silent. And giant killers are not silent. They open their mouth. They speak up. They shout. They are verbal. They, they are people who do not allow the low places of their life to let Goliath to stand out there and put fear and intimidation and you're not going to do it and you're not good enough and you're inadequate and you'll never be. You're not a winner. You're a loser. You're a failure. If you let Goliath, he'll talk you out of the miracles God has for your life. But giant killers get right out in the valley and say, you know what? It hadn't happened yet, but I'm going to praise God in this place. Where I, am. I wonder if there's anybody who's a giant killer in this room. One more time, give him a shout of praise. You may not be out yet, but you're coming out. Hallelujah. I'm preaching myself out. I want to keep going. Notice that the shout is linked to victory. It's not about the decibel level. Some of you don't understand all the noise thing. It's not about the decibel level. It's about the dedication level. It's a shout with clap. There's always a sound to victory. There came a sound from heaven in the, in the upper room. And the Bible said, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. So don't minimize our praise and don't put down our praise and don't act like it's something that's a time filler because it's not. Real giant killers learn how to praise, to worship, to dance, to lead, to shout. And if you stay silent, your church will never be victorious. There's a new sound filling the church. And it's not one of gloom and doom and religion. And it must be old smell of what used to be. This is a new day, and he's doing a new thing, and he's going to have some new sounds of praise in his house. If you praise him, I move on. Everybody take a praise break and shout out to God. Now, like this, watch. In verse, in verse 25, in verse 25, watch this. So David goes out and he hears this trash talk named Goliath defying the God of Israel. And in verse 25, the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. 
it should be that every man who kills, any man who kills him, the king will make rich, give great riches, will give him his daughter. Everybody says she was good looking. And give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. They're talking and they said that David overheard them. And he's hearing the giant and seeing the giant from a ditch. It looks huge, but he starts hearing them talk about what you get if you kill him. And he hears them say, the king will make you rich, number one. The king will give you his beautiful daughter. Which, by the way, I'd just like to throw this little point in there. We're giving the measurements of Goliath. We're told how much he weighed. We're told how much his shield weighed. We're told how much his armor weighed. I want to know how much did Saul's daughter weigh. And what were her measurements? We know more about the problem than we do the solution. We know more about judgment than we do mercy. We know more about hell than we do heaven. But giant killers focus on the reward more than the giants. Now watch this. This is almost funny. I want you to see this. Because, because he tells him one time, they're talking about it in verse 25, you know, that you, you get these three things. Then David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, in verse 26, they just told him what would happen. In verse 25, and in verse 26, then David said to the men that stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine, takes away the reproach of Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And the people answered him, verse 27, in the manner saying, Sir, it will be done to the man who kills him. In other words, they repeat it again. I've never seen this before, but then you read his Iliad, his oldest brother, made fun of him and said, why do you come down with a few little sheep to, to try to fight? And David said, watch, is there not a cause? Verse 30, then he turned to him another one and said the same thing, and these people answered him as the first ones did. Three times, three times, David turns and says, tell me about the reward. Tell me about the reward. Tell me about the reward. Because giant killers do not focus on the giants. They focus on the rewards. And there's a reason why he did it three times. Because if you're going to be a giant killer, if you listen to what people say, if you more than you hear what God is saying, if you listen and look at what your eyes are telling you more than your faith is telling you, then you will never be a giant killer. Giant killers are focused on the reward, not the battle. Get your eyes on the prize. And I want to remind somebody who's fighting a giant that, that there is a reward for every one of us. I like that song they were singing a while ago that was talking about, you know, if I didn't have anything else in life but Jesus and the cross, I would be thankful because the truth is this. If you don't ever get the car and you don't ever get the house, Here's the truth. There's a reward every time you obey God. That you mean to tell me there are streets of gold? You mean to tell me there are gates of pearl? You mean to tell me there's a place that Jesus said in my Father's house are many mansions? And if it were not so, I'd go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be seen also. What I'm saying to you is there's a reward and we can't get discouraged. Some of you are fighting giants and be so easy to go back, but I'm going to remind you of the ultimate reward called heaven. There is a place where there is no more sorrow, no more pain. There is no cancer. There are no cripples. There is no suicide. There is no addiction. There is no temptation, and there is no devil there, and it's going to be worth it all. Heaven is real. If you believe it, give God a shout.
there is a reward coming. I want you to notice something else in verse 34. Notice this in verse 34. He says, uh, but David said to Saul, that, you know, Saul said, when he said, I want to go fight, I, I want to fight because I want that money and I want that pretty girl and I want tax-free living. I'd fight for that. Tax-free living. No taxes the rest of your life. He said, let me go. Let me go fight. Come back. <laughs> the devil tried to steal my son. Take a praise break while I pull it together up here. I'm not nervous, no need for you to be. Notice what David said to, to Saul. He said, he said, he said, why should I let you go fight? He said, a bear came and a lion came. One night and I saw it. I slew the bear. I got a lion rug in my bedroom by the fireplace. And I got a bear, bear hide on the barn outside. And I want you to see the point. In other words, he said, I did what was right in the dark. If you're going to be a giant killer, you've got to be the same in the dark as you are in the daylight. There must be a call for character in 2015. With 82 million free porno websites, we must guard our hearts and guard our eyes and guard our ears and guard our soul. And God's enemy was Goliath, but David's enemy was the bear in the line. And you can't defeat God's enemy until you defeat your own personal enemies. And if you can slay your own personal enemies, God says you're ready to slay a national enemy now because you dealt with the bear in the line privately. And you're the same in the daylight as you are in the dark. Verse 37, a giant killer, he said, I, I fought the bear, I fought the lion, and the same God will, will, will kill this uh, uncircumcised Philistine. Giant killers see, see their trials as training, not as troubles. A giant killer sees the trials, and he doesn't go around moping and sorrowful. And whining about the trials they've been through because the truth is you're never going to kill a giant complaining about every little lion. I've never seen a moping giant killer. I've never seen a joyless giant killer. If you're going to kill giants, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you don't see your trials as trouble. You see it as training. And I went through that and God made me victorious. And I went through that and God made me victorious. And now I can do this because I fought that. And through the same God is with me through it all. Verse 39, and David said to Saul, take my arm. In other words, David have two wardrobes. And he tried to own Saul's stuff, his armor and all of that, but he couldn't wear it. He said, this is not me. Giant killers have got to be themselves. Giant killers cannot be somebody else. If you're going to be a giant killer, you can't be somebody else. God made you like you are and He wants to use you like you are. And He doesn't want me to be something I'm not. He just wants me to be who I am, completely yielded in His hand. And He refused. You see, you can't have two wardrobes if you're going to be a giant killer. You can't, you can't have your church clothes. And then go to the club twerking it. You can't have two playlists on your phone. One with Hillsong and Young and Free Praise and Jesus and the other with blankety blank, 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 blank. Oh, I don't like that. That's legalism. No, it's not. It's called old fashioned salvation. The old things pass away. I love rock, I love all kinds of music. I'll tell you where I draw the line when it 
in it too deep in its vulgarity, the Holy Spirit says, I don't want to hear that. Thank you. 
Check that, please. I didn't see that. I'm almost done. Read the Bible. 
Bible say? Took the head of the giant. Sound effects, come on. And took him to his tent, his house, and set it up on a spear. And said, I don't just have victory before the congregation, but giant killers get the victory in their own home. They take authority over the enemy in their own family. They say to the devil, you can't have me, you can't have my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my children, my grandchildren. I don't just have an anointing in church. I have an anointing and authority because the head represents authority. I have authority in my home. In my marriage. In my family. And I've been married to my beautiful wife for 28 years. I love her. I still love her. And I've had the enemy say to me at different seasons when the enemy would attack me or my wife or my children, my family, you can have victory because the Bible said he did it before the congregation. I didn't have time to read. But he did it before the congregation. And when all the people saw it, they shouted. And the enemy wants us as, as ministers of the gospel. He doesn't mind if we have big victory and anointing and authority in a service like this. But what he trembles at is that you are here. That might have just reached down. Just reach down and grab the head of Goliath. Your Goliath. And pull it up. And this is Halloween. Come on, it's all right. <laughs> Hold it up and say, I'm not just going to have a good time in your song conference. Say it. But when I leave here, I'm taking authority back to my house, back to my city, back to my church, back to my nation, and back to my family. The authority is established through Jesus Christ.
Christ the Lord of your life because if he is not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. And I'm going to count to three for those of you that are willing to leave it all behind and say, Jesus, I need you. I can't work my way up to you. Thank you, Jesus, you came to me. I can't do enough right things. Thank you, God, you said the only right thing in Jesus. Now, I get to call on his name if you need forgiveness of sin. When I say three, put your hand up. If you have walked away from God, maybe you're trying to fight your own battles, and then tonight you're going, hey, you know what? I'd rather lay my sword down and have the grace of God pick me up. And in that moment, our God can rescue your soul. I'm going to count to three all over this place. Every head back, every eye closed. If you need Jesus, lift your hand. This is not a prayer to feel better. This isn't a prayer for Jesus to fix some things. This is, I am a sinner. And without the grace of God, I am destined to a life that is going nowhere for my own sin. But in Jesus, I want forgiveness. When I say three, lift it high. You ready? One, Jesus loves you. He died and rose again so you can have life too. The Bible says right now is the time for salvation. Do not wait another day. Three, lift your hand all over this place. Shoot it up high. All over in the back. We see you. Lift it up high. Who cares if anybody's looking? If you need Jesus now, lift your hand. Say me. Anybody else? I can put it down. Bill some Conference, can we give these people a huge, huge, huge hand? What are we going to do better? Come on, it's a party. Just remind me about one more time when our team's going to come. We're going to sing that song for the bishop, the big eagle who's floating around somewhere. Just bow your head, and if you lifted your hand, I want you to hear me before we pray this prayer. Happy birthday. All this world is here. We're going to lead you in prayer. And trust me, it's not this little prayer that saves your life. It is the state of your heart. And in this moment, our God is faithful to rescue and to save. So we're going to say this prayer together at the end of it. We're going to lift our hands, lift our voices. Even if you can't sing, sing. Nobody can hear you. It's loud in here. Let's sing about the only name that saves. Because the church is going to let you down. Conferences will come and go. But our God is faithful. Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. All right, let's say this together. If you lift your hand, say this with me. Say, Jesus, here I am. I need you. I am a sinner. And I need your grace. And tonight I choose to follow you. By your grace, I am saved. By your power, I am set free. It is a new day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, lift up the young crowd.
early. Last night's always the best night. Always, always the best night. It's going to be an incredible night tomorrow night. And uh, then, of course, those of you who took a compassion child or are interested, please remember to take it back and sponsor that child. Let's believe that lives will be changed today. We're going to take a moment. We're going to sing two beautiful songs. We're going to go out here worshiping God. You're welcome. Just lean in and stay. And uh, safe trip home. See you early in the morning. Be blessed. Hang around. We're going to sing a couple more songs.